There is a Bible proverb from our shared faith of the Carnicle family that we are to give honor where honor is due. And that's what today is all about. While it has been far from the way that we envisioned it to be, but this one thing is for sure. We will continue to honor the life, the calling, and the family of Commander Greg Carnicle. We also remember with deep gratitude the two wounded officers that survived and the heroism of that day by so many officers who responded to the three most feared numbers in all of law enforcement, 999, officer down. We will continue to grieve Commander Carnicle's absence and the effects of that horrible day that will last a lifetime. My name is Bob Bessmeyer, and I am privileged to serve as a chaplain with the Phoenix Police Department. In our closing moments together, I'd like to take just a moment and ask you to reflect with me. Allow me for a moment to encourage each of you before officers return to those streets, are non-sworn to their tasks, and our families back to their homes. In the incredibly difficult, violent, distressing, and stressful times we live in. It is important to find hope. It is important to see the good. It is important to hear the truth. And it is vitally important to encourage the soul. The greatest threat to police officers has never been bullets. It is the constant attack on their soul from the violence, ignorance, arrogance, and selfishness that comes at you day after day. Not just you, but your loved ones those who worry about losing you in so many different ways, mind, body, and soul. Every time that you suffer because of the actions of someone else, there is a temptation to choose a different path in life. When you've been hurt so deeply, when you grow weary of people who don't seem to care or thoughtlessly believe the worst of you, when you grow mentally, physically, and spiritually tired of giving and giving and your heart being stomped on again and again, or like today, the price seems too high to pay. You might be tempted to choose a path of perceived safety, perceived protection of your soul. But C.S. Lewis wrote about this temptation. He said, to love it all is to be vulnerable. Love anything and your heart will certainly be wrung and possibly be broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give your heart to no one, not even to an animal. Wrap it up carefully, round with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entertainments. But in that safe, dark, motionless, and airless space, it will change. It will be not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, and the only place outside of heaven where you can be safe from tragedy or the risk of tragedy, the only other place outside of heaven that you are safe from all those dangers of love is hell. There is another choice, the one that you live every day. You just use a different word to express it. You use the word honor. Honor is to live for something greater than yourself, to live for someone greater than yourself. You do what's right because it's right, even if it's going to harm you, give you nightmares, harm your soul, or take your very life. I personally have witnessed this honor and integrity as you continue in this year from hell to respond without hesitation to the baby not breathing, the child beaten, the teen whose parents can't handle them, the vulnerable adults who have no other protectors, the subject with the knife or the subject with the gun, machete or flamethrower. Yes, that's a real thing. You respond to traffic fatalities and the mentally ill. You save those at death's door because of an overdose. You search in 100 plus degree heat for a lost elderly person who walked away from their home or you continually faithfully to search for a loved one that has been missing for years. You talk people out of decision that will cause harm for the rest of their life or end it. And while it would be a great temptation to let people see what a day without you would mean, because of your honor, you know you can't live with yourself if an innocent person suffers. And so you continue to place the threat of their suffering 
of the the real and present suffering you experience on our behalf. You do this for everyone, regardless of race or creed or religion, regardless of whether you will receive a thank you or an F the police. And in all these things, you don't stop to take a selfie, to post how great you are, or draw attention to the millions of times you do your job with the highest of professionalism. You quietly and effectively go about your calling with courage, compassion, and excellence, not perfection, excellence. It is God's word that reminds us that all fall short of God's perfect plan. Perfection is the foreknowledge of everything so that you're going to make sure that no matter what happens, every decision or action you make works out perfectly for everyone involved. But only God is perfect. Excellence is doing all you can with the training you've received, using all the resources available to you, in the split second you have to make a decision or take action. You are not God, but you are created in his image. You are not perfect, but you are covered by his grace. You are unique in that you never ask anyone to do what you do not already require of yourselves. You are the only people I know who respond to a, to the, with medical aid to the very people who moments ago tried to kill you. Depending on, defending the very rights of those who would say and do evil towards you, you professionally, courageously, and steadfastly stand as both guardians and warriors because this is who God made you to be. And it is him who encourages you with these words today. Be not overcome with evil, and evil will come at you but overcome evil with good. You are that good, a gift given by God who always sends his best in you every day. You are set apart and ordained to this calling, not just you, but your loved ones who experience suffering because you stand strong. Your loved ones, the most special of all people, often overlooked when they pay a price because you fight the good fight. Do not grow weary in doing good. This is a hard ask in days like this, in a year like this. But the one who called you does not ask of you what he has not already done for you. In the New Testament book of Hebrews, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, those who have faithfully gone before us, people like Commander Carnicle and all the others we have gathered to honor so many times before. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorned its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary or lose heart. It is easy to lose heart. It is easy to lose sight of your heart calling. And that's why in moments like this, the real priorities of life come into their sharpest focus. We are reminded that there are only a few things in this life that will follow us into eternity. And Commander Greg Carnicle was an example and leaves a legacy of these truths. The only real priorities in life are faith, family, friends, and fulfilling our calling by finishing well. God's promise is that you are never alone. God's promise is that you are never forgotten. God's promise is that you are never abandoned. That even in the shadow of the valley of death, he is with you. He does not promise you will not suffer. In fact, the opposite is true. The righteous will suffer for doing good. But his promise is that he will be your shield. He will be your defender. Vengeance belongs to him. And he will vindicate each of you for all that you do that is right and good. Before every shift, there is a man-made promise. The promise that every officer knows. We all go home today. And you do everything possible to fulfill that promise. But when that promise cannot be fulfilled here on earth, God himself steps in to fulfill that promise in heaven. 
and ushers us into an eternal home. And on that day, we will stand before the one who called and equipped us to hear the words, good and faithful servant, well done. Welcome to your eternal home. Today, we know that Commander Greg Carnicle is already there, not because of his perfection, but because he dared to follow Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And one day, for all of those willing to accept this invitation, we will join him there. And all those who have gone before us, those who have finished well and did not grow weary of doing good. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Would you join me in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, it is you who gave us these honorable men and women and those who love them like no one else can, their families. Today our hearts are broken as we come alongside the Carnical family to both honor his life but also remind them that they too will never walk alone, abandoned or forgotten. It is you who surrounded all of us with the incredible people that support and encourage. It is you that has given us everyone from our communications to crime scene specialists, caretakers, that are call takers, and the thousands of other important tasks that are done. We thank you for a command staff who lost a wonderful and good friend and community leaders that support them. We thank you for the thousands who are joining this grief with us, either virtually or through their prayers that they offer continually. Thank you for those who have shown their love, their compassion, and their support, and remind each person here that it is you that we look to for our hope and our peace, knowing that this is not a crutch for the weak, but the power of God in and through his people. And we ask that you heal our hurting hearts. Remind us of the legacy the integrity and the honor that we have been challenged with in remembering and honoring this incredible man, Commander Greg Carnicle. For we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>